Number 60, integrated concepts. A five gram charged insulating ball hangs on a 30 centimeter long string in a uniform horizontal electric field as shown in that figure. Given the charge on the ball is one micro coulomb, find the strength of the field. All right, so here's a little picture. And what we realize is we realize that this ball is basically in equilibrium, okay? Uh, does it say that, by the way? No, it doesn't. But we have to assume that uh, something is the case. Either it's moving or it's stationary, right? So we have to assume one of the two. I'm going to assume that this is stationary, okay? Since it's stationary, I know it's in static equilibrium. If I know it's stationary and it's in static equilibrium, what do you know about the forces? They all have to be balanced, right? All of the X and Y forces that are acting on this ball must be balanced. So why don't I now begin to draw in some forces that are acting on the ball, okay? Oh, you know, the insulating ball. So we have a, so gravity is acting on the ball, right? We're assuming that it's, you know, how did we know that? Well, they told us a, a mass. I'm assuming this is happening on Earth. Uh, so it's feeling the force of gravity due to the Earth. So there's a downward force on this ball. We'll call it F sub G, force due to gravity. There is also an electric force on this ball, okay? Now, if we notice, right, the electric field lines here in the problem are pointing to the right. That means that there's some negative area on the right and some positive area on the left. That being the case, knowing that this is positively charged because they told us that the in the problem it's one microcoulomb. They didn't state it's negative and therefore it's positive. Um, what is the direction then of the force on this ball? Well, think about it. It's positive to the left, negative to the right. If this ball is positive, it's going to be attracted to the negative side and repelled by the positive side, right? So there should be then a force vector pointing here to the right, okay? I'll call that F sub E. And last but not least, now if you just left the problem like that, this these are not balanced forces, right? If you just had these two forces in the problem, they are not balanced. There is a resultant force somewhere between the two. So there must be a third force, right? And the third force here is going to be, and maybe what I'll do is I'll put it in yellow or something. The third force is going to be the tension. Okay, let me see if I can draw that out. There it is. The tension force here produced by, oh, that's, gonna, oh, that's a terrible color. I'm going to put it back to black, but just so you can say, okay. This is the uh, tension, right? Well, the force due to the, what is it? String. Let me just call it that. It's tension, but I'm going to call it the force due to the string. I want to keep everything in FFF, all right? So now we know since it's in equilibrium, we know that the sum of all of the forces in the x direction should equal zero because there's no acceleration, and the sum of all the forces in the y direction should also equal zero. Now, what are the forces in the uh, x direction? Well, we simply have the electric force here, right? So I'll call that F sub E. And then if you notice, based upon this result, you know, this vector over here, let me actually move this F sub S over here, F sub S. We now know that this creates basically, right, we have a little triangle here with X and Y components. The X is going to be on the top and the Y component is over on the, on the side. So now I realize that the Tensional force here, the force due to the spring, has an X component to it. But I got to know one of the angles in here. And the angle in here is going to be 8 degrees. That should hopefully make sense because, how did I know it? Because it's 8 degrees up there, right? We got like alternate interior angles, whatever the heck it's called. Right? I don't remember. Um, so what we realize now is that we are going to take the electric field force, okay? Essentially, or the force being produced by the, that electric field, and subtract from it because this X component is pointing in the... Uh, left-handed direction, and subtract from that the force due to the string multiplied then by the sine of 8 degrees, okay, because it's the opposite side. So that should hopefully be okay. So we realize that this will equal zero. So uh, let's leave that alone. Let's transition to the y now, all right? So we have a force due to gravity, but that's negative. So let's write that negative f sub g. And then there's a positive y component here uh, from the force of the string right? And that is going to now be a cosine. So it's basically the force of the string multiplied by the cosine of 8 degrees minus the force due to gravity 0. 
Now, why don't we expand on a couple of things? Remember, they're asking us to find the strength of the field. Do either of these have electric field strength in them yet? No. So how can I get electric field strength in it? Well, I realize it's probably going to come through in the force, uh, the electric uh, force, right? So we have the formula over here on the right-hand side. It says that the electric field is equal to the electric force divided by the charge that's in that electric field, right? So basically now what I'm going to do is solve this for uh, um, the, electric field, uh, the electric force, and that's going to be equal to the electric field multiplied by the charge. So what I realize is now I can basically take this and plug it on in for F sub E. So let's do that. So we have the electric field multiplied by the charge okay, of the, of the object minus then the force on the string times the sine, oops, I don't know why I wrote cosine, times the sine of 8 is equal to 0. Okay, great. Now what about this? Well, can I expand on anything there? I can expand on the force of gravity. You know that that's going to be mg, right? So let's just expand on that right now. Minus mg will be equal to zero. Okay, now, remember, we are after this. We've got to somehow solve for our electric field. So why don't we solve this equation right now for E, okay? And let's see what we then know and don't know. So if I solve this equation for E, I realize it's going to be the force due to this of the uh, string, force of the string there, times the sine of 8 degrees, divided then by Q, right, or the charge that's on the ball. Do you know Q? Sure, they told it to us. It's 30, uh, no, it's not 30. It's 1 microcoulomb, so we know that. But do you know the force of the string? No. So now you might say, well, we got to find this. Well, yeah, kind of. We've got to find an equation, right, either we find this or we find an equation that can tell us what it is, okay? So I realize now I basically have two unknowns, okay? And in order to find E, I better figure out a way to find the force on the string. So I realize that I have another equation over here that has force of the string in it. So why don't I maybe solve that equation for force of the string? So when I solve it for force on the string there, it's going to be equal to mg divided by cosine of 8 degrees. Now, do you know the mass of the ball? Yes. Do you know gravity? Yes. And do you know? Yes. Right? So, wait a minute. I actually know what this is. So, why don't we calculate it now? So, the mass is going to be 5 grams. you got to have that in kilograms. So, 0 0.005 multiplied by 9.8. Divide that by cosine of 8. And what do you get here? See how if we work through both equations simultaneously, right, we kind of do a two-track analysis here, we can easily see how these things connect with one another. So the force that the string is exerting is going to be 0 0.0495 or so. Now I can take this result, right, and I can take, put it in blue, I can take this result now and plug it in for this, and then I, I have everything now that I need in my formula. So E will be equal to 0 0.0495 multiplied by the sine of 8, and then all divided by the charge of that object, so it's 1 microcoulomb, so it's 1 times 10 to the minus 6th, and let's do it. So take that, multiply by sine of 8, then divide it by 1 times 10 to the minus 6, and what do we get? We get an electric field strength, I'm going to plug it up here, and it's 6.89-ish times 10 to the 3rd. Newtons per coulomb. Voila. Guys, thanks for tuning in. Appreciate it very much. Please remember to help us out and subscribe, and we'll see you soon. Take care.